And now today's top story. Four men wearing ski masks armed with semi-automatic weapons entered and held up a local bank and managed to get away with just over $73,000 in cash. Before their escape, the police made it to the scene and after a heated gunfire exchange, one of the gunmen was taken down. Although his identity is not disclosed at this time, a spokesperson from the bank told our sources that he had tied to a notorious motorcycle gang known as the Hells Angels. It is not known at this time whether the other three gunmen were associated with the Hells Angels, as this is still an ongoing investigation. More on this story as it develops. There are some events that are so overwhelming that you can't simply be a witness. You can't be above it. You can't be neutral. You can't be untouched by it. Simple as that. You see it, you live it, you experience it, and it will be with you all of your days. Navy SEAL, but it also says you ran with the Hells Angels. Now me, I can care less what you did on the outside, and here you're just another convict on the wrong side of the law. Now, you keep your mouth shut and do your time, and you walk out those doors in the same condition you walked in. But if you so much as pass gas and ends up in my direction, you might walk out of your fractured skull. Are we clear? Are we clear? You won't get any trouble out of me. Good. We're showing Mr. Golfer at his quarters. Open the tank. This is you. Did you get that hair tie? All right, you two boys play nice. Rockefeller's brother, Esse. The way you rolled in, you think you own this place. Are you deaf? Get out of my seat. That's so right, Esse. I just want to do my time to get out of here. Continue to run your mouth. Whoa, 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 whoa. You know who I am? I don't, know. don't care. Well, you should care because that could kill you. Oh. Hey, you two knock it up. Well, you're lucky they showed up when they did. What am I being arrested for? I'm soda. I mean sober. Yeah, whatever. Save that for the judge. Hey man, that ain't right. Three huevos, one vato. Remember the Alamo. What one is? Hey fool, did you say soda? Just fine. Why do I feel this way? The 
What's happened to me? Uh, hell no. You ain't taking me down. Charlotte Holmes, I know you're plotting something. This man is on something and it's nothing good. Like what? I don't know, but it's causing him to trip the way he is. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I know this man. Yes. He's a pastor from, I, for, I forgot what church, but he even prayed for me. What? See, that's why I don't go to church. Crazy crackhead pastors. He seems so genuine that I even let him pray for me. I don't know what happened, but I certainly don't do drugs. Yeah, sure. And I'm the Mexican Tooth Fairy. What are you doing, man? You're in your holy tank, just like the rest of us. I can't remember a thing. What's the last thing you do remember? I don't know. I was at church. I think. We were having a pot of dinner. <laughs> Someone gave you some special brownies. How can people be so callous? Well, I've misread people sometimes, and people have even misread me, but... What do you mean? Well, you know, the curly hair, the nose, the full lips, they think I'm black and white. I know what you are. My actor. Sorry, but he brought it up. So what are you? Black or white, I'm actually Puerto Rican. Orale, another Latino. Really? You're right, Holmes. I thought you were half my outfit. Yeah, I get that a lot. People don't say much with their words, but they, they see a lot with their eyes. I know what you mean. Just like my voice, I slur because 10 years ago I had a stroke and it didn't affect my body, but my motor skills and my speech. And people think I'm drunk or on drugs. It really hurts my heart. So I know what you mean. Kind of sad, you know, sometimes people don't even realize what the words do and how they hurt other people. You know, feel for you, man. Hey, bro, what's your story? I don't have a story. Uh, come on, the way you handle me with that Rambo stuff, I bet you got the best story of all. You know, big fella, I really do think you do have a story. Probably help us if you tell us that story, maybe we can understand you a little bit more. You know, all my demons started in Vietnam. I saw my comrades fall, their comrades fall, you know, that's something you'll never get out of the back of your head. It's just, uh, I believe it all the time. It's just like a nightmare. What's it like to kill a man? Well, you don't want to know. That's blood you can never wipe off your hands. When I was with the Whispers, we, uh, we were sent to uh, extract someone from Cambodia. And they had a a whole compound and contingency of people in the compound. And we had to splash them all. Splash? Take them out to kill them all. No survivors at all. There were seven of us, and only four made it back. I was the fourth man. But uh, when I turned around, heading for the landing zone, I found myself alone. Without any ammo, so I had to make it to the beach, which I did, with no ammo, and I had to make it back to the boat, so I had to swim to the boat. I had nightmares and cold sweats. And never, not a day goes by I don't remember that. How did you learn how to cope with it all? I met a man that changed my life forever. And who was that man? Jesus Christ. <laughs> I knew there was something special about you. Oh, great. I get the only Christian that doesn't know how to turn the other cheek. When I was discharged at a Treasure Island, California, I had to have an escort with me who was a lieutenant because we didn't wear civilian clothes, but we had that little white package. You carried your DD-214, your discharge papers, and your honorable discharge. Well, 
when they when we came back to LAX, they had uh, protesters and rioters. They they were calling us baby killers and all kinds of crazy stuff. They spit on us and were kicking us. And the reason I had to have that escort because I was a loose cannon. I just got out of the battlefield. And who knows? Who knows what I would have done? So it wasn't fun coming home. It was a terrible war. People don't understand the trauma that was associated with that war. You know, brother, looking back on that, I know that God was with me every step of the way. And I've been mis misjudged all my life. People with these, see these tattoos and they, they associate the horrors that come with them. I was through Vietnam unscathed, but you know, I'm fighting the biggest battle of my life right now. What's that? diagnosed with cancer. Wow. How can you serve a God that won't heal you? I used to fear death until I found out there was life after death. Eternal life with Jesus Christ. Holmes, just listening to your story, I'm beginning to believe. You know, brother, like the Bible said, be absent with the body, be present with the Lord. You know, I see Jesus on the cross, helpless, a bloody mess, nails in his hands and his feet. And I think, how could this man help me? You see, friend, the Bible tells us that Jesus was crucified, but he rose from the dead on the third day, and that he ascended to heaven and that he's sitting on the right hand of the Father. And the awesome thing about it is the Bible says that he, he's praying for us daily, every minute. He's praying for you and me. Wow, that's deep. How can I have God in my life? Well, you see, going back to the cross that's now empty, there were two thieves that were on the side of of Jesus, one to the left and one to the right. And the first one said, you know, if you're truly the son of God, then deliver yourself and deliver us from this cross. But the other one in a humble spirit, because he knew something was 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 uh, different in, in that moment. He said, if, because you are the son of God, he recognized he was the son of God. He said, remember me when you come into paradise. And Jesus turned to him and he said, verily, verily, I said, you, you will be with me in paradise. So when you ask, how can that help you? All you got to do, my friend, is just believe. You see, brother, that's the life I have now. I'm like out of the girl. You know, the Bible says in John 3:16. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in them. And guess what? That whosoever is you and me, the big fella here, and our friend over here. Whosoever believed in him would not die because of his sins, but have everlasting life. If you want, you could have that everlasting life too. And that's what God offers you today. That's how he can help you right now. I do believe. I do believe. I do believe in you, God. Forgive me for ever doubting you. That's me. Good morning. Pastor. How's the wife and the kids? Doing good. Doing good. Um, got some good news, got some bad news. What's the bad news? Bad news is that the Browns were laced with PCP. I knew it! It's always the Brownies. And you weren't the only one that was affected by them. 
we got some real problems when a parent brought in their 12-year-old and they were experiencing the same symptoms. Things are still under investigation, but you've been cleared, cleared of all the charges. All we're doing right now is waiting for the paperwork to process, and you'll be free to go. And how's the child doing? Child's doing good, doing good. Um, had a good scare. Doctor said she'll be just fine now. Exactly. That really is good news. Thanks. Appreciate it. Mr. Goldberg? Good morning, sir. Good morning. Very peculiar thing happened on the way over here. A few of the inmates wanted to thank me for leaving the lights on and the audio turned up. Care to elaborate on that? I don't think they can. No, I didn't think you could. What's particularly weird about this whole scenario is that uh, although we control the lights, we have no control over the audio. But what's equally as weird is that we have one switch for all of cell block F. We have no way of isolating the lights in your cell. Feel free to jump in at any point. I'm sorry, I don't have any answers for you. Well, what do you think happened? It depends. On what? On if you believe in God. Why well, believe in God? Then you have your answer. I don't know what the other guys saw, but we had our lights out, and we were very quiet. We kept our voices down to a minimum. Okay. Well, then I guess I'll give you the news I was planning on giving you. It may not be good news for them, but they'll be leaving us today. Apparently, the warrant that they picked you up on is older than 20 years, and the statute of limitations has run out. So I suspect uh, as soon as we clean up the paperwork and file our reports, you'll be free to go. You know, it's not too often I get a chance to say this, especially across the bars like this, but I suspect we're going to miss you around here, Mr. Galbraith. Things just seem a little brighter since you've been around. God bless you. God bless you. Good morning, congregation. Uh, as previously announced, uh, we have a very special uh, guest speaker amongst us. Uh, somebody who I uh, recently met, and uh, he's going to bless us today uh, with some words. So at this time, I want you to go ahead and, and get prepared for our special uh, guest speaker and my friend, uh, John Galbraith. God bless you. My name is John Galbraith, and this is my story.
But to witness a baby's birth straight from the mother's womb Erases any doubt within my mind You created someone so beautiful and I'm nothing Your artistry is known and never smiled the laughter of all these child creates a melody That you have given to us to cherish the breeze and why I believe, yes I believe Hi, God bless you. My name is Danny Lopez and I want to thank you and I hope that you enjoyed the film Out of the Darkness. For me, I want to thank the, the very talented and very dedicated group of men that have put this project together. For me, it was their efforts that made this film possible. I want to thank John Galbraith for always being there and uh, his unwavering support and his dedication to this project. Sometimes you run into a few snags along the way, but you know what, God had a way of putting this project together and making it work in a way that uh, I am so proud of it. You know, we had lost one actor for whatever reason, but when I saw the performance that came from Mike Davis, I was, I was very blessed and very humbled by his performance, as well as my younger brother Benny, who played Pastor Benny in the film. I want to thank my partner and my uh, the other half of the dynamic duo, which is Don Fish Jr., uh, he's worked with me with MVP Production as well as me working with him on Valley Vista Production for many, many years, and I want to thank him for his support. Um, I want to thank T Tony Nunez, who's been like an older brother to me from day one. We've known each other since I was 13. He's helped me with this project as well. Again, I want to thank Henry. Um, brother, you were an outstanding character in this film, and uh, Kudos to you, my brother, because you stepped it up and you really knocked it out of the ballpark. Um, I mentioned Benny, I mentioned Mike, and I mentioned John. His performances were stellar. I also want to thank Ray Hauregi, who's been like a son to me. I've trained him both in the martial arts, but I've also mentored him back and forth, and he's mentored me. He's a Christian, and he was uh, he came on board and volunteered his time, and I want to thank him for doing that. He put out a, a, an outstanding performance as well. So to all of those guys, plus George R. and Sepia who helped put up that green, green screen at the very last possible second in order for us to get this picture done in time. Um, so I want to thank everyone who was involved in this project. I want to thank my wife for, for playing the news reporter on this film. I think this project was, was, was ordained before it even started. And uh, through thick and thin, I, I'm glad that it turned out the way it did. I think we had the most outstanding performances we could have had from each character and I think the project came together um, in the very end and I, I hope it, it showed through the work. Again, thank you for watching it. Uh, God bless you and uh, 
once again out of the darkness. <laughs>